Hey guys, Hayden here for Ham Radio DX, and I'm up at a repeater site that I maintain after uh, uh, this repeater's uh, developed a fault. So I've come up today. It's a lovely, uh, nice uh, winter's day. Um, very uh, sunny and actually not too cold, which is good. So I've come up here, and uh, we'll have a look and see what the problem is. Uh, the repeater's receiving fine, but it's just not transmitting. So let's run through a couple of tests and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on with it. But um, I might do a bit of a, a tour first to show you what the system's about anyway. Now next up in the rack you can see that there's uh, the voting panel runs um, of the flavour of uh, Asterisk All Star that I've uh, covered in previous videos. So that's uh, located in that black panel. Above that is the duplexer, which uh, I suspect might be a problem uh, here today, perhaps on the transmit side. Uh, this uh, particular duplexer is a Motorola, um, rather, or sort of semi-old type of um, type of duplexer. Now the next uh, shelf up, you can see the uh, the GPS unit uh, flashing away in the background there for timing and for frequency accuracy. And uh, our uh, APRS unit here on the left uh, using a TNCX, a TNCX um, digipeter. And uh, in the uh, in the top rack, we've actually got the uh, the repeater. So we're going to uh, we'll open or oh, do some tests. And we'll see what the problem actually uh, looks to be here today. Your GPS unit, which uh, is connected to that GPS inside. Uh, one thing that I didn't show uh, earlier. That just runs inside. Actually, quite pleased with this uh, little unit. It's oh, well, it come with the GPS unit itself, but on eBay they're only I think ten ten or fifteen dollars. And I thought that this might uh, might wear away in the in the uh, the harsh conditions that we get up here in the winter and also the summer but no it's uh, it's worn quite well so it's uh, got a little magnet on the other side so that just sticks to the side of the hut and uh, provides the GPS timing. So I've got my little VX8 handheld so the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, uh, get the repeater to transmit and just make sure that it actually is transmitting um, to, uh, to double check as, uh, as there's two repeaters on the same frequency. I need to make sure that this one uh, is uh, transmitting and this is one that, I'm, uh, uh, that it is actually working. So that will be the first thing that we'll do. So i just uh, got my handheld here so I'll get it to key up. We can see that it's transmitting. Turn it off and it disappears. So that, um, that part seems to be working so that's a good sign so the next thing that we'll do as uh, as it's receiving fine I don't really need to worry too much about that uh, the next test is to uh, hook up my my test set and we'll do some power measurements and uh, see what that comes back as okay so I just set up the test set to um, see if uh, I could figure out what was going on with the transmit side and the GPS <laughs> after all that talk about the GPS the GPS appears to have failed. It, it says it's active. You can actually see that it is, but it's showing an alarm at the moment. It's not getting a GPS lock. It, sh it shows alarm when it doesn't have a GPS lock there. So it is running, um, but um, but there's no GPS that's being received. So I suspect that that antenna has actually failed on the GPS. So after all that, um, yeah, it, uh, <laughs> those GPS antennas aren't much good. So unfortunately, without uh, having that going, I can't really test uh, any further which is a bit of a bummer. Driven all the way up here without a spare GPS antenna always uh, goes to show that when you visit repeater sites you should bring uh, absolutely everything that you can think of. So, so basically what I was going to do was the repeater is connected to the test set here and I was just going to measure the transmit power which um, goes via this attenuator straight out of the transmitter which should be around about 40 watts I think that's what I set it at and then uh, basically uh, if that checked out okay go down the line check it at the end of the uh, interconnecting cable there if that was fine uh, check it maybe uh, in the middle of the duplexer there where it uh, goes off to um, the antenna so to find out uh, where the where the issue is these um, these cavities sometimes uh, require cleaning or uh, they get a bit corroded or something inside I've, I've cleaned these once before and had a similar issue so I suspect that's probably what it is but um, yeah I'll, um, I'll have to check the next time I visit so GPS is still uh, still waiting for acquisition so I think that that antenna has failed and I don't have one don't have a spare with me so um, I did take some uh, some footage of the antenna as well up on the tower we've got a uh, diamond x50 
uh, vertical antenna which um, runs uh, runs at the 70 centimeter repeater here and there's also a folded dipole which runs the APRS uh, which you saw in the rack as well earlier and uh, there's also uh, we have a point-to-point uh, -point, uh, wireless link back to uh, another site which uh, which runs um, runs uh, another repeater uh, across uh, on another nearby ridge so that's uh, that's basically what this site is this is the secondary side of the system the main sites uh, further north of here but uh, this uh, does quite well when it's working and when the GPS is working so a little bit bummed about that these are uh, the BG7 TBL GPS's they work very well but I hadn't had any problems with this uh, GPS at all it's been up here for 18 months and had no problems so maybe uh, there's been a bit of bit of rain or something so uh, got into the GPS and uh, caused it to stop working and uh, perhaps when I moved it as well that's what's uh, caused it to fail so yes unfortunately it's not uh, it's not picking up any any satellites so okay so I brought back the rep uh, radio from the repeater site uh, I, I thought well if uh, the GPS is not working I may as well uh, bring this back and uh, just give you a bit of a um, an idea of what's inside. Uh, usually there's a main board that sits in here but uh, I remove it out of uh, out of these units as it's not required and uh, saves a bit on power consumption. This is the receiver uh, module underneath this uh, this lid. You can remove this and make your adjustments in there. Uh, but this is the section that I've been looking at. This is the uh, this is the exciter module and then the PA module um, of course this runs on uh, UHF. Now um, this uh, exciter produces uh, 200 milliwatts out and I've tested it here and it does uh, put out 200 milliwatts so I know that this is working however once it gets into the PA uh, there's a driver module underneath this, uh, this um, piece of metal there you probably can't quite see it's just under there that should produce uh, I think it's about five five to eight watts of power or something at this point here uh, before it goes into the final stage there where it uh, goes up to up to 50 watts so I've uh, tested up to about here, so I just need to check to make sure uh, that the drive is working and figure out uh, why this thing failed. So, it's uh, yeah, the radio is the problem, not the uh, not the duplexer. So, yeah, the the repeater's putting out no output power or very very little output power. In fact, um, if I if I do a test here, I can find out exactly how much. Yeah, it's not even registering. It's a bit of a bit of an attenuator at the moment, so yeah, a bit of work to do. But uh, at least I've uh, figured out that this is the issue and uh, can work on it now. Okay, so a little bit more progress. Um, I uh, took that uh, driver out that I was talking about. This is the device in question, a Mitsubishi module M five seven seven zero four H, because this was producing no output power. So I found another one off of a uh, another board that I've got here. And it sits in here and just solders on, and then. Uh, it uh, bolts down onto a, a copper spreader uh, for the heatsink. So I've just soldered it in and uh, I managed to get at least 30 watts out, which was uh, unusual because these things will do 50. So I checked a couple more joints and uh, just uh, redid some solder connections and now I'm back up to uh, to 40 watts again now. So uh, that seems like uh, it's been a success. So we've got 40 watts, so I've, I've dialed it back to 40 watts as uh, that's what I run this repeater at. And uh, it's now drawing 9.1 amps, so yeah, successful. Managed to uh, to fix that one, so next job is uh, go back up and install it at the uh, repair site.